Hi everyone, my name is Anita Ladhani. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and an energy practitioner. And I wanna to talk to you about keeping or keep, uh, hiding and pushing our feelings inside. So a lot of us, every one of us at some point has had our feelings hurt, we've been disappointed, we've been betrayed, we've been hurt, you know, we've been lied to, uh, we've had heartaches of some sort, right? People disappoint us and that's just life. And what do we do when bad things happen to us? A lot of us, what we do is we push it inside and we stuff it up inside. We bottle it up and we don't talk about it, right? Whether it was childhood trauma or whether it was something that happened as an adult, we just stuff it up. We don't talk about it. We pretend like everything's fine. We pretend like we're strong and we just keep going. And what happens is I'm here to tell you that that is actually not the healthy thing to do. So people will say, well, you know what? That made me stronger. And because of that, I'm able to, you know, I was able to accomplish so-and-so in my career and I was able to, you know, get up and do what I needed to do. And I'm glad you were able to do that. Great, because you didn't know any better. So you use the only resources you knew, which at that point was, not talk about it, not deal, not deal with it because you didn't feel safe. You didn't know who to talk to. So the only thing you knew at that point was to bottle it up and use that to actually push you in to do something with your life. Wonderful. But what I want to suggest to you is that the stuff that you, the things, the emotional pain, the trauma, the, the, whatever, you know, experiences that were not so pleasant that you went through and that you stuffed up actually stays there and because it's toxic it's like it's like a po poison that just festers and festers and festers and eventually it seeps out it comes out and how does it come out it comes out in different forms so it may come out in the form of actual physical ailments you know, you may get sick, you may get high blood pressure, you may pick up an illness, you may have something, you may have depression, you may have anxiety, or you may not have any of those, but you may have trust issues in your relationship, or you may, you know, it may impact the way you parent your child, because now you are projecting that approach of suck it up, you know, stop talking about it, we're not gonna cry, you know, we don't talk about stuff and you expect, excuse me, now your child to just go through life that way. And if your child is, you know, his or her own beautiful soul, he or she doesn't have that, you know, framework of stuffing it. So they're going to want to talk about it. And then that when they're not able, they don't feel safe, they don't feel secure in being able to talk about it. Well, then they get they get anxious, they get depressed you know, they're cutting, they're hurting themselves, you know, they're crying, they're, they have low self-esteem, they're afraid of disappointing you, they're great suffer, on and on and on. And so what I wanna suggest to you is that, you know, your story and everything that you went through is something that actually shaped you and molded you into who you are today. Now you can either use it to let it destroy you or you can use it to let it chip your off pieces and let you be this amazing diamond now right let's talk about a diamond when when we when diamonds are actually found they're just dark pieces like fuzzy pieces of glass right they're not beautiful they're not attractive but what makes them this beautiful what gives them their glow what gives them their shine it's when the jeweler chips away at the different parts of this diamond the uncut diamond is not not beautiful at all but when the when the jeweler chips away at it the more chips that a diamond has the more beautiful it shines and i want to suggest to you that analogy apply to us because i know for a fact that the more things that i've experienced that have been painful some of the things that really have destroyed me in the moment that i was going through it and the moment lasted years sometimes, right? It wasn't just a moment in time. It was years of just whatever. Those are actually some of the things that made me the amazing person I am today. And I say that with the utmost humility because all of those contributed to 
me learning and me growing and me being the person I am. If I had not gone through all of those things, and if I had not encountered all of those betrayals and all the heartache and all the everything, I wouldn't, and if I had not allowed myself to learn the lesson, and that's the key, right? I wouldn't be the person I am today. And so be proud of your story, you know, learn from it, use it, you know, share it. Your story is nothing to be ashamed of. It is something that is your testimony and, and it is your why. It is your why and it is why you are the way you are. So own your story, own whatever happened to you because again, whatever choices you might have made, you might not have been proud of some of the decisions or choices you made in life. Guess what? We all make mistakes. Trust me, if you know me well enough in my personal life, you're very aware of all the mistakes I made and I continue to make even, you know, as of last week, right? But again, as far as I'm open to learning and growing and and constantly, you know, letting it letting it, you know, show me a way to be in the world instead of letting it, you know, stifle me and keep me stuck. So Again, talk about your trauma, talk about your pain. If you do have unresolved pain, which a lot of us do, guys, a lot of us do. Even, I'll tell you, even with all the work that I've done as a therapist, all the energy work I've done, all the EFT I've done, the hypnotherapy, the theta healing, the hours of counseling, you know, the, the fact that I'm a therapist and my friends are therapists and all the therapy we do with each other, in spite of all of that, I still have issues that, that come up and that I need to process. And so, May I suggest that you use the EFT tapping, you know, to start to release some of that. And if that's not something you're able to do, then find a therapist, find someone, find a counselor, find someone, that, a psychologist, find someone you can go talk to, someone who can help you unpack, you know, whatever it is that, you know, you haven't unpacked because you keeping it inside, the last analogy I want you to think of is you're like a pressure cooker. So when a pressure cooker, you know, the steam heats up and heats up and heats up. And if the whistle is not there to release the steam and the whistle is therapy, prayer, crying it out, processing the pain, learning from it. If that whistle is not there and you just keep, you know, the pressure cooker just stays on the heat and gets more and more heated up, that pressure cooker will burst. It, that's just science. It will burst. And so what happens when it bursts? Well, you will get hurt and whoever's around you will get hurt because it's hot, it's dangerous. Um, and so why do that? Why do that to your to yourself? Why do that to your loved ones? You know, you really owe it to yourself. But if you don't want to do that, then you owe it to your loved ones to start to address your own trauma, your own grief, your own past stuff so that you can be the best, healthiest version of yourself. And that's who you bring into any relationship you go into, whether it's with your kids or whether it's with your spouse or whether it's at work, because all of that, whatever area of your life is you showing up and you getting an opportunity to be of service. And how can you be of service to others if you don't learn to take care of yourself and if you don't give yourself that respect and that consideration? So um, talk about it, reach out, pray about it, find the therapist, find the counselor, um, and start to address it. And it can be healed. It can be resolved. Anyways, love and light. God bless and take care. Bye-bye.